Let us consider the trajectory or world line of an arbitrarily moving particle. By arbitrarily moving, we of course mean its motion can be uniform or non-uniform or a combination of both. Since the particle is a material body, so its speed at all points on its trajectory is less than the speed of light and therefore tangents drawn at any point of the world line must lie within the light cone at that point. So world line of the particle is a time-like curve and all infinitesimal segments of the world line are time-like intervals. Let us say we are observers in the inertial frame S0. We always are at least when we are discussing relativity. If we take two infinitesimally close events on this world line, we have a infinitesimal space-time interval which is as we just discussed time-like. Now it better looks like a straight line. Why? Because this interval is so small that the slope of the world line or in other words the velocity of the particle does not change while crossing this tiny interval even though the particle's overall motion may be non-uniform. Let's zoom in a little bit so we can look at it easily. Now, if we, the S0 frame observers, care to measure, this infinitesimal space-time interval will appear to be made of a certain combination of spatial and temporal pieces. Let's replace the arbitrarily moving particle by an arbitrarily moving observer, a person. He of course is a non-inertial observer in general. We shall be looking at an infinitesimal interval only. What does he observe from his rest frame perspective? The two infinitesimally close events that we have been considering occur on his world line. Zooming in a little again. In his rest frame, say S2, these two events appear to occur spatially at wherever he is. By definition of rest frame, he cannot move spatially at all with respect to S2. See how his movement in space-time is along his time axis only, which is nothing but the local tangent to his world line at every point. So to him, these two events appear to occur at the same spatial coordinate location in S2 frame. Only his clock kept ticking between the two events. So he sees the two events occur one after the other only separated by time. So what observers like us in S0 or S1 frame see as a combo pack of spatial length and time elapsed, he sees as a pure time duration. But so far, we have been discussing about time-like space-time intervals only. What about the space-like intervals or space-like curves? These are curves in space-time such that tangents drawn at any point on it will fall outside the light cone drawn at that point. Thus, slopes at every point on space-like curves represent speeds greater than the speed of light and therefore no material body can move along such curves. Consider two infinitesimally close events on such a curve. The infinitesimal interval between them is space-like. To get a specific physical example of space-like interval, let us consider length of a stick which is at rest in our S0 frame. So in our space-time diagram, it will appear to move vertically upwards along our time axis. Now to find how long the stick is, we have to get the space-time coordinates of its two endpoints simultaneously and calculate the space-time interval between them. Since coordinates of the two endpoints are noted simultaneously, the temporal part is zero by prescription here. So this space-time interval is obviously space-like and it looks like a purely spatial segment to us as zero observers for obvious reasons. It's just the length, right? But if the S1 frame observer measures the space-time interval between the same two events, he does not get a purely spatial segment because he is not measuring the length of the stick here, but he is just looking at the same two space-time events that we have used to measure the length of the stick. We can figure out what he will get if we draw the space-time diagram of S1 frame on top of ours, like we have done earlier. Note how the two ends of the stick appear separated in time as well as in space according to the S1 frame guy. So, the observer in S1 frame sees a combination of spatial length and elapsed time for the same space-time interval which appeared as a pure length to us in S0 frame. In an earlier video in this channel on types of space-time interval, we have explained that for any given space-like interval, there is always one frame where it appears as a spatial length. In this example, our S0 is that frame. So hopefully you are getting the trend, right? Being time-like and space-like are characteristics of the space-time interval itself and depending on this character, the interval may look like pure time or pure space respectively in certain frames. 
Although for observers in general, it still is a combination of space and time parts.